Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed and glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now we are in a new week and we are rounding up the month of October. And the Lord said to us, this month of October, the book is being opened. And that's what we've been talking about all month. And as we round off this month, there are certain thoughts I would like to share with us to draw back our minds to what the Lord is really saying in this season. But before we do that, can you join your faith with mine right now as we call for that daily bread? This is a request the Lord commanded us to make. He said on this broadcast, I should lead you to make demand for your daily bread. So if you believe in Jesus who commanded us to do this, then join me right now in faith and say, Father, I demand from you right now for my daily bread. I receive all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, you see, sometimes, I've told you this before, the most important things with God are very simple things. Samuel said to Saul, obedience is better than sacrifice. And to hacking than the fat of rams. Obey. Hacken. Listen to what the Lord is saying. And obey. As simple as that, your life is made. Sometimes we think it's the noise we make. Sometimes we think it's the energy we put in. No, sir. Every energy you put into God is the energy to hear his voice. Every energy, if you're going to do long fasting, simply for that purpose, that you may hear his voice. If you're going to do any labor in God, do it for this reason. Because anything you do that doesn't result in you hearing his voice, see, you can fast because you want to see manifestations in your life. You want to see manifestations in your ministry. But I'll tell you one truth. If that manifestation is not tied to his voice coming to you, even that manifestation can mislead you. See, and the devil can manifest things. Angels can manifest things. See that now? But the manifestation that comes from God is always following his word. What I mean his word, following his voice to you. So you will hear the Lord tell you, do this. And then when you obey that voice, you will see manifestation. I've shared with you on this broadcast how many years ago, many years ago, I was still very young as a preacher. <laughs> God. I had... I had this prayer meeting I was to conduct. And just before then, someone really, really offended me. I was really hurt by what the person did. I mean, really hurt. So I was annoyed, angry. And in that mindset, I went for that meeting. And when I got to that meeting, I was supposed to lead prayers in that meeting. But then I just thought about it like I, I didn't feel like praying. Now, I want you to follow this story if you've not heard me say this before. I didn't feel like praying. So, when I got to the meeting, I was still angry. And then I thought to myself, you know what? Let's show some power. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? As the power is in our pockets, you know, we we'll bring it out when we want to bring it. <laughs> because I, I just thought to myself, you know what? There's no point praying. I'm not happy. There's no point praying. Let's, let's display some power. So I, I stepped out and I said, look, if you're sick in this place, come out. And people came out. And I began to lay hands on them. Out of anger, I'm telling you, I was laying hands on them. And they got healed. I mean, they, they testified. Those that had pains, the pain left instantly. Now, while 
Those testimonies were coming because after I prayed for them, I said, check it. Now, I was that bold. I was angry, yet bold. I said, check it now. It's gone. Check it very well. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. Then. So we, we, we finished that meeting. It turned into an healing meeting. Meanwhile, it was supposed to be a prayer meeting. We finished that meeting and I went back home. And while I was just praying and thanking the Lord, I was glad, like, yes, you know, uh, there's power. I've, I've got power, man. I've got power. Praise God. So I got home and then I knelt down to pray. I just like, Lord, thank you for showing up today. And I heard the Lord immediately say to me, I didn't show. You didn't show. So yeah, all those people that got healed, I didn't heal them. What do you mean didn't heal them? They testify, were they lying? The Lord said, I didn't heal them. Now you must understand the way God speaks. He didn't say they were not healed. He said, I did not heal them. Now if God did not heal them, it's a mystery in godliness. If God is testifying to me that he did not heal them, Meanwhile, the people testified that they got healed. So there was a manifestation, but it was not from God. You now ask the question, so where did that manifestation come from? Now, I didn't know it then, but later as I grew in the things of God, I understood what exactly what happened. You see, I will tell you this. Now, because I'm anointed, okay, when I stand to minister, I have an assistant who ministers with me. And that assistant is an angel. He's an angelic being. He's there. See, whenever I stand up to minister, he's there. Now, if we choose to walk in the teaching ministry, He's there to assist me. If we choose to walk in the healing ministry, he's there to assist me. Now, he assists. Now, here's where the problem is. Even if I disobey God, but I show up to minister and I say, we're going to heal now, he will follow. He is there to help me. See that now? But now, because the instruction to heal did not come from heaven to me, there is no life. I come and message it here. There is no life at that moment. Now, there is manifestation, but there is no life. So things will happen. But whatever has happened now, is not directly connected to the flow from heaven. Are you getting me? And then the Lord said to me, he says, every one of them, the sickness is going to come back. I never knew that. Of course, I've known people who got healed and then the sickness came back. You know, even Jesus told that man that got healed. He said, now that you have been healed, don't sin again, lest a worse thing happens to you. So I know that there's a tendency for someone to get healed and then the sickness will come back, right? But then I, I didn't think about it that the problem might be the minister. See that? Now, Jesus said to that man, don't sin again. If not, the worst thing will happen. So it's the person. The person gets healed and then he doesn't maintain his healing. The sickness will come back. But I never realized that the preacher can become a problem. So because I acted in disobedience, there was manifestation, but because that manifestation did not come from heaven, that manifestation was, was arranged from here with angels. It was real manifestation. The people really got healed. But this is the difference. Now, when, when, when I always tell you, it's important you hear the voice of God. This is the difference. When the voice of God is involved, it means heaven itself have given allowance for that thing. Now, because heaven have given allowance for that thing, the empowerment is directly from heaven, not from between me and the angel. 
I pray you understand these things. Praise God. Because cause it will help you. It will help you. If you want to live a life that is eternal, no, we talked about eternal life some months ago. If you want to live a life that is eternal, that's the connection. Don't go for manifestations alone. Go for his voice. Now, when you go for his voice, one thing he's going to do for you is give you accuracy in flow. Now, whether there is a manifestation or there is no manifestation, if his voice comes to you, it is surer than anything else. So, now if the Lord says, I want you to heal that person, you hear that voice and then you go lay hands on that person and then you don't see anything. You don't, the person, oh, how do you feel now? I still feel pains. How do you feel? I still feel, but you heard the Lord say, lay hands on that person. But, and you've obeyed what you heard. You've laid hands. But the person is still saying, I'm not seeing any change yet. Relax. I'm telling you, you can go to sleep. The person will wake up and the sickness is completely gone. Yeah, completely gone. Because you obeyed that voice. But you by yourself can go lay hands and there will be manifest. Oh, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. Two days later, that sickness is back, even worse. There are people who have gotten healed and later the sickness came back and they died. You see that now? So, all these things can happen. That's why as a child of God, not just because you're a minister of the gospel, as a child of God, you must, the only way you can trust that you're living and walking accurately with God is when you hear his voice. Whatever you are doing must be in response to his voice. So, when the Lord said to us on this broadcast, call forth your daily bread, make demand for your daily that's an instruction he has given. So, when we do it, we are walking in line with truth that has been given from heaven. And that's why I know God will surely meet your needs as long as you release your faith with me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. A miracle is going to take place in your life. There is, there is an open door of supply that is coming from the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's an open door of supply that is coming from the Lord. And that supply, I'm seeing someone in particular. Now, you can connect with this miracle. But I'm specifically seeing a fair lady, right? I'm seeing a fair lady. You've been in, in, in tough need recently. Your fair in complexion. You've been in tough need recently. I'm seeing that, that there's a door that is going to open for you. And that open door is coming very soon. But that open door... That this particular door that is going to open for you is something that is going to sustain you for years. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That door that is opening is going to sustain you for years. It's one open door. And then that open door, what is going to come out from that open door will sustain that thing itself will sustain you for years. Now, I'm not saying you go and touch money. I'm believing of the money for you. I'm saying the door that is opening for you, that door will produce a sustenance that will last you for years. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So the Lord says he's opening the book. Now, now, in seasons like this, your concern should be how to live accurately with the mind of God. That should be your most concern in this season. How do I walk accurately with God? You see, because there are, there are, there are lots of things that are going to be happening on the earth. Let me tell you 
don't think the times ahead are going to be easy. There's going to be lots of confusion. I'm telling you, there's going to be lots and lots of confusion. Now, we are stepping into the month of November. And I'm going to tell you the truth. Except you're a child of God that knows I could me make it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he said, those who know they are God shall be strong and they will do exploits. That's the only saving grace for this season. Only those who know they are God will be relaxed. Every other person that don't know they are God, there will be great perplex perplexity in their hearts. They will be so perplexed. They will be curious. A lot of things are going to be happening around that will shake you. Looking at it naturally, it's not good. But when you look at it from the place of a child of God, you see the reason for this. I told you, Satan is going to resist the opening of the book by every means. Well, here's what the Lord says. Every attempt he makes will open up the gates of judgment against him. Every attempt Satan makes so that the book is not open is going to open up the gate of judgment against him. Now, he's going to make several attempts. See that now? He's going to make several attempts. What you're seeing happening in Israel was an attempt of the devil. You better believe me. You see, people don't, people don't understand how to read it. Sometimes when you hear, you see, you better be careful on the kind of information you allow into your heart. A lot of people you see on social media, they may be preachers. They may sound intelligent, but they are not intelligent at all. Every intelligence that is not given by the Spirit is foolishness. Foolishness. You've heard people say, oh, um, um, you know, when, 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 because believers, you know, you find believers who say, I stand with Israel. Now, when, when, when we say we stand with Israel, not because we, we are not concerned. Sometimes these things are deeper. They are deeper. You don't even know what you're dealing with. And so, oh, even Israel, how many Christians are they? See, you don't get it. God promised a man and entered into a covenant with that man concerning that land. He did. He cannot fail that man. Who's, man, who, who's the man I'm talking about? Abraham. He's not looking at them today and wondering whether they are serving him or not. No, he knows how to deal with them when it comes to that. And let me tell you the truth also. You don't know God. You don't know God. You think he's there counting? No, no. See that land. He knows what he wants to do with the land. It's not about the people that are residing there today. Go read your Bible. Even in the days of Jesus, there were many devils already living in the land. Jesus knew. The most challenge Jesus had was with the Jews. Why didn't he leave them and come over to Africa or come over to somewhere else where you'll find some good people who will receive him? No, because there is something about that particular land. And that's why Satan is fighting tooth and nail. He thought if he makes the, everybody ungodly in that land, God's going to abandon the land. But he forgets that God is a covenant-keeping God. Abraham walked in righteousness till the end. He did not deviate from it. He walked in righteousness till the end. As long as Abraham walked in righteousness till the end, God owes Abraham for eternity to keep his own part of the covenant. He cannot give that land up. So no matter who's in that land, when Satan wants to rise up to claim what he doesn't have, what does not belong to him, guess what? God will raise an army to discipline him and finish him up. This thing is beyond what you think in your mind. So when people begin to talk anyhow, 
Just keep quiet because they don't know what they are talking about. Oh, are you happy about all the people that are being killed? <laughs> he said, nobody is happy about it. But see, remember also, God is a God of justice. He's a God of justice. Even as bombs are flying everywhere, I tell you one truth. Hey, Kalabasaya. I tell you one truth. God is doing his calculation. There is nobody that dies that he doesn't know. No one. And believe me, next month I'm going to begin to teach certain things that may be upsetting to some, but so true. Depths of truth, because this is the time. I hear the Lord says, it is time to begin to bring forth those knowledge. Let men hear. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. My time is up already. Now, listen, this week, Thursday, 2nd of November, I'm going to be having an all men's meeting. If you're in the city of Abuja, I want to see you there. The details are on the screen. Please, if you are in the city of Abuja, in Abuja, and you're a man, whether you're married or you're not married yet, whatever that you are a man, I want to to see you. There are things the Lord have laid in my heart to share to men. There is something coming that we need to prepare for. We need to prepare for. So plan for this this week, Thursday, the 2nd of November. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.